Welcome to the Just Ride Snowboard channel. I am Lars Horstmann and we have to talk a bit more about binding adjustments. Today, possibly about the most important thing you need to do and that is centering your boot across the board and adjusting the size of your binding if your binding is size adjustable. Let's take a look what this is all about. As an example for non-size adjustable bindings, I will use my own, the Now Drive Pro, that's what I'm riding. And as an example for a size adjustable binding, I got a set of bent metal transfers here. These were kindly given to me by my good friend Connor. Connor Anderson is a person you all need to check out here on his Instagram. Very talented guy, crazy ass snowboarder and skateboarder. He is a Karua ambassador. And first and foremost, I'd say he's an artist and therefore check out his Instagram, give him a follow. He's a good man. When I'm talking about centering your boot across the board, I'm talking about shifting your binding in this direction. So it's super important to mount your binding so that your boot has equal amounts of toe and heel overhang. To really hammer home this point and to emphasize how important that is, I came up with a couple little gadgets here. So I mounted this piece of uh, wood to the other one and this is resembling your boot and this is your snowboard. And basically you see here that we have equal amounts of toe and heel overhang. And when I put that down here and I push onto these edges, that feels absolutely equal, right? It's identical. And I have to overcome a certain amount of resistance until this thing then finally tips on edge. And once I'm there, I can feel some sort of pressure. And I want to call that my, you know, my edge pressure or the, or the resistance I can work with in a turn that I'm pushing against. Um, now, I mounted another piece of wood where that is not equal. And I want to call this, this side here the heel edge and this the toe edge. And the reason for that is that the vast majority of people that do not have their boots centered are riding with more heel drag than toe drag. And why is that? Because you cannot see your heels. People who realize that they are on too narrow of a board mostly realize that because they're booting out on their toe edge. Um, and why is that? Because it's much easier to get high edge angles uh, when you're riding on your toe edge than it is on your heel edge. It requires way more technique to get your board high on edge on your heels than it does on your toes. Um, so the first thing people will notice is like I'm booting out on my toes. In particular, the, the old uh, Euro carving trend where people do one single carved toe turn uh, with their whole body in the snow um, quickly gives you this impression of like, well, I guess I got too much toe drag. And because you can't see your heels, this is how you end up. Now, what happens here is pretty obvious. I have more leverage here on my heel edge and the resistance um, when I push down is much much lower than it is here and to really show you how much lower it is I brought out the old kitchen scales so when I take this and put it in the center and then I push onto my heel edge where I have more leverage and it's easier to get it on edge that's the amount it requires and then here the pressure is significantly higher to get it on edge so that took almost twice as much pressure to get onto my toe edge than it took to get onto my heel edge. Although um, the overhang difference here on this piece of wood is pretty minor. Um, now what does that mean? Like if it's really significant, um, like you have way more on your heels than on your toes, it can feel like you cannot even build enough pressure on your heel edge um, to get good grip. And uh, on the contrary, it could mean that when you get on your toe edge, it's actually sluggish. It's too much to overcome the resistance. Um, and your board in that moment would actually have um, more leverage over your foot than your foot over the board. And that's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll make an episode about short fats, like the short fat trend of snowboards, where I'll discuss this. Um, it's not a good idea to ride a board that is actually quite a bit too wide, relatively speaking. Uh, as your all mountain daily driver and that is uh, one of the reasons the board simply gets more leverage over your foot than your foot over the board um, the biggest thing here is simply that it's that there is a difference and why would you want uh, a different feel tipping from heel to toe 
even though um, you might not ever notice in a functional way, as in like uh, catching your heels or whatever, because maybe you're just a beginner and, and you can't get the board on edge yet properly. Um, the key point is simply, uh, it, it makes so much more sense to, to have an, an equal feel uh, when you transition between the edges. And um, my recommendation to beginners has always been like selling somebody a beginner board uh, based on the assumption, well, he's just a beginner, he can't get this thing properly on edge anyways, and uh, he's not going to notice that it's a little bit too narrow. I find that silly because I would want a person to get used to the proper and appropriate waist width of a board from the very beginning, because you do build muscle memory in that regard. Um, and again, like being able to set a beginner up um, with equal amounts of heel and toe drag, it can only be beneficial in the long run. So with non-size adjustable bindings like my Naos here, uh, the only way to center your boot across the board is actually by um, using the mounting disc of the binding with the slots running from heel to toe. So in this orientation here, I hope you can see that, um, you just mount the disc or the binding, uh, put your boot in there, and then you can keep the screw slightly loose and simply uh, see that you find the boot centered. So I mounted my um, binding, put the boot in there with a rough uh, guesstimate of what's centered. And if you want to be super nerd, what you can do is you just put a little piece of paper under um, the edge, you draw a line, use the edge as a ruler basically, and then you take a little piece of wood or something square that you put on there, and you draw a line there, and this is basically I can measure this distance. This is my, um, my heel drag that I got right here. And then you want to do the same for the toes. Push heavily on the board so the piece of paper doesn't shift. And then whenever you put your, your square piece of something uh, on there, make sure it goes against the boot, not on the heel edge, not against the heel cup, but actually the boot. So in my case, I get 10 millimeter uh, overhang on my toe edge and I get 13 millimeter overhang on my heel edge. Yeah, that just means I need to move my bindings a little bit further forward towards the toes. So let's take a look how this works with a binding that is adjustable in size. There's a great advantage to these systems. Basically the heel cup and the chassis down here, that's two separate pieces. Um, and the two are attached with the screws here that also hold your straps. That's at least uh, the most common way of doing this. And when you loosen these screws or partially also remove them entirely, you can actually then slide the heel cup out to adjust for a bigger boot or in to adjust for a smaller boot. And the advantage is that you can then use the mounting disc and run it lengthwise on the board because you don't need to center the boot with the disc you will do it with the heel cup. So I mounted the binding and you can see that I'm running the disc lengthwise here, which allows for a micro stance width adjustment. So this binding is adjusted uh, to its smallest size. And I think bent metal medium is roughly eight and a half to 10 and a half, something like that. And uh, I'm a 10, so I'm likely in the largest or maybe in the medium setting, the ride Insano boot that I'm in is a pretty compact uh, short boot. So um, we'll take off the straps of this binding and then I'll show you how to move that heel cup. All right, let's take these guys out. You can see here, these are in the smallest setting and with bent metal, once the straps are off, that moves super smoothly. Um, I'm just going to pull these into the largest setting and we go from there. This is a little bit of a trial and error. All right, I got my boot in there, largest setting, and I'm very unhappy with it. When you look at this, you can see I got tons of heel drag and pretty much no toe drag. That means um, I'll have to readjust into the medium setting. So I adjusted the binding into the medium setting and I put my boot in there, uh, and if I don't want to go through all the measuring, there's a very simple trick you can apply. You basically just uh, stand the board up against the wall, like so. 
Just lean it against the wall with the boot in there. And the boot, by the way, the binding is at zero degrees. And you can see in this case how there's a tiny bit of heel visible and no toe. And that's obviously because the camera is standing right in the middle. Um, so there is, there is drag on both sides, but as you can see here, uh, there's a little bit more uh, on the heel edge than on the toe edge. With the bent metal size range on a size medium being topped out at about an 11 or 10 and a half even, it is quite surprising that in the medium setting and the size 10 boot, I still have a little bit more heel overhang than toe overhang. So that uh, shows you that you can't really rely on the manufacturer size ranges and you should simply try uh, for yourself how your boot sits in that binding and how that after all looks when it's all mounted. So once you've adjusted the size correctly, there's one more thing that you need to figure out and that is the placement of the toe straps. Um, most bindings that come with an adjustable heel cup, you can also then change the uh, position of the toe strap. And that is by pushing this out, so it pops out underneath here. And then you have one, two positions right in there. There are two little, um, two little cutouts where this little um, plastic tab here will slide into and if you are for example in the smallest setting there is a good chance that you have to move um, the strap to the uh, position further back and in my case being in a medium setting I had the better fit uh, with the strap being all the way slid forward and you have to do that on both sides here. The last thing that you uh, have to adjust, if possible, is uh, then your toe ramp. So these bindings don't allow for toe ramp adjustment, neither do the nows. Um, but for example, a union binding where you have the heel cup adjustability, uh, once you have adjusted the size, you also want to adjust the toe ramp. And I'm just going to give you um, a visual of this. So for toe ramp adjustment, what some people think they need to do is kind of this. They will move the toe ramp all the way out till it's literally under the toes and that's not really where it's supposed to be. Um, you want to fill this gap right here and therefore the toe ramp actually needs to be a little more under the ball of your foot, like possibly somewhere about here. Um, and the reason for that is that you're not actually pushing with your toes but with the balls of your feet. And um, if you are thinking that sliding out the toe ramp will avoid toe drag, that is also unfortunately not the case. So as I said earlier, I do all of this uh, with one binding set to zero degrees, just straight across the board. Um, and then I center my boot and I memorize the position of the screws on the disc. Um, so I have that um, down for my other binding. And then I simply um, adjust my angles to where I want them. Some people would prefer the method um, once the angles have been adjusted. So basically you set the bindings up the way you want to ride and then you really go and measure um, with that uh, piece of paper that I showed you there earlier. And you really then measure what the toe and heel drag is. There is a very mild difference uh, between the one method and the other. Personally, like I find the one or two millimeters aren't really uh, that big of a deal. But yeah, that's kind of up to you. So what's the takeaway of this? Uh, go check whether your heel cups are actually adjustable, whether your binding is size adjustable. Um, great example that I see all the time, like union bindings come in the largest setting and people simply aren't being told in the shop that they should check and adjust the size or maybe they buy online, whatever. Um, I constantly see people in the lift line and union bindings with the heel cup all the way out and they have all this heel drag and no toe overhang. And it's, it is not a good ride to have your boot off center. It's a very important adjustment. Uh, once you've figured that out and you have your boot centered, if you then start constantly catching your toes, the remedy is a wider board. It is not simply sliding uh, the binding back so you end up with more heel drag uh, just because your riding level doesn't really make you catch the heels that much. So you're like, ah, whatever, get away with it. Really try to find a board width 
uh, that allows for centering the boot across the board so you get equal pressure uh, going from edge to edge. It'll change your life on snow. All right, cool. I think we covered just about everything around um, binding setups and, and stand setups. Please feel free to check out all my other episodes around this topic. There is stance width, there is stance angles, there's like a pro tip episode where I dive a little deeper into the nitty gritty of all of this. And then there is a high back forward lean, high back rotation. Now we had centering your boot and adjusting uh, binding size. So I kind of feel like that's about all you need to know. And I really, really hope you got something out of this whole series. If you liked what you've seen, please feel free to share the love with your friends. Get the notifications so you're being informed what's dropping here next. And first and foremost, see you on that hill.